All right, we're ready to get started with Coach Barnes. We'll begin with Rick Russo, Rob Lewis, and Billy Witz. Hey, Coach. Good afternoon. Uh, what has the week been like so far up there in Indianapolis? Got there Monday, and what's the update on John Fulkerson right now? Well, we are definitely in the NCAA bubble, and uh, they have got this thing, I think, locked down the way you would expect it to be, uh, doing everything, you know, from the time that we've gotten off the bus, uh, arriving here to the way we went through the protocol to get settled in and how we are starting to get settled in. And uh, again, John is, is day by day. And uh, we're, we'll, again, that's where we are with that. Coach, um, you know, I'm sure you're deeper into the Oregon State scout this week and, you know, looking at their stats for the season, they were not a great three point shooting team, but they shot the eyes out in, in Las Vegas. What, what did you see differently from them over that three game stretch? Well, they, again, really well coached team. Uh, they have a lot of different sets. They like to run and you're right. They, they shot the lights out, uh, making really going from seven in the regular season up to 10, 11 in uh, the conference tournament, uh, balanced inside game. They got a very strong inside game, uh, good size and, uh, active post players and their guards, obviously, uh, the Rams big to them right now, and they, they, they shot it well. They played well. They played hard. It looked like to me they really extended their defense to get more aggressive that way. Uh, again, what, what I've watched, I watched, you know, a couple games with them, obviously. and But uh, just impressed that the, right now, this time of year, Rob, they're playing great basketball. They're playing their best basketball of the year. And, and for them to do what they did to get here is really something uh, to be proud of. Go ahead, Billy Witz. Hi, hi, Rick. Um, hey, you know, one of, one of the one of the quirky things about this uh, bracket is there's a lot of schools that are um, whose colors uh, is orange, and I think you the way the bracket's laid out, you could get to the final four by just playing teams that that have orange. It's kind of in a way. Do you do you ever? I mean, when you play something like that or play teams like that, do you ever worry about uh, pass into the wrong color? No, I mean, no, because there will be, you know, different color, you know, uh, I've had to adjust to the orange a little bit. You know, I've had three different schools with orange and, you know, I can tell the difference uh, when I'm having, you know, from move from place to place, but no, you know, there, there'll be a team with a light uniform on normally and one with a dark uniform on and, and uh, but I, I don't think there's any problem with that. Okay. And, and just with, uh, yeah, I think for what, like the last 27 years, you've coached at a school where their main color is orange. Um, what does your closet look like? How many sport coats, orange sport coats do you have? And how many orange ties? Well, I have no orange sport coats. You know, I have, and I was given one when I first went to Clemson, which obviously I, I don't use now. I had a, a burnt orange one that I, I don't use. And uh, I don't have a, a Tennessee orange, which I, I'm not – I've never been big into that, to be quite honest with you. You know, I, I just – I've never wanted the attention to be on the mirror or staff when we go out to coach a game. Uh, but the fact is, uh, orange is a good color. I, I mean, I like it, and, and the one I'm wearing now is my favorite. And uh, so that that part's really good. And uh, you would mentioned to me about us being concerned about throwing it to orange. Sometimes I'm just concerned about it. I just hope when we just throw it to ourselves. If we can do that, I'll, I'll be happy. Okay. All right. Th thanks very much. Okay. Mike Wilson, Nicholas Hill, and Vince Ferrara. Yeah, Rick, Oregon State's a team that, that commits a lot of fouls, especially given how few possessions they play with. Is that something you've tried to hammer into guys like Eve and Keon is how much success they might be able to have in getting to the line in this game? Well, I think it's always important, Mike, to get to the line. I, I really do that. But I also think in this game it's very important not to let them get there because they've got – Terrific shooters. They that shoot a very high percentage from the three from the free throw line, and so uh, you know every game. It, it regardless of who we we played, we've always tried to put an emphasis on trying to get there. You know, not only to give us a chance to score, but also a chance to put fouls on on teams and try to hopefully get to their bench. But uh, that's important in every game for us. And and I would say that looking at their three their free throw shooters, a couple of them that shoot a high percentage, they They'll try to do the same thing to us. 
Coach, kind of going off the last question, you know, Oregon State coming into this game is ranked 315th in the country in adjusted tempo. Uh, do you think it is important for you guys in this game to try to push the tempo? Um, and do you think that will be a significant factor in the outcome of this game? Well, we always force try to force tempo. We're always trying to push it. Uh, you, again, once the game starts, I like to think right now that, yeah, we could play it the way that we'd like to play it. But games aren't like that. You know, you've got to adjust when things get going. And, uh, Foul trouble, different guys coming into the game can, can alter the way you play. You've got to be able to make those adjustments. But there's no doubt that we, as a team, we like to get out and go. And and we need to do a better job in open court situations. We had some opportunities in our last game out that we didn't convert in those situations. And we need to do that. If we're going to get out and go like that, we need to make sure we're going to get something on the other end. Rick, there was a stretch during the season where you guys were really relying on Jaden to, to really score for you guys. And I know he does so many other things for you. Um, and you mentioned he wasn't maybe feeling his greatest there for a stretch of games. How would you describe how Jaden's playing right now? I, I think, first of all, he's working hard and he does that. You know, we need him to do that too, but but we need him to be aggressive on offense. We just need our guys, he, Santi, Keon, those guys to stay on the floor not to jump to make passes, you know, and get themselves in trouble. We've got to cut down our turnovers. It's, it's simple. I mean, we've got to do that. And and sometimes our opponent has something to do with it. More times than not, we've, we've put ourselves in some tough situations where we try to do too much and, uh, you know, turn the ball over. And this time of year, you can't. I mean, well, you, I don't think you can at any time, to be quite honest with you. And you go back to the games that we haven't played well, it's when we've turned it over. And – we're fortunate in our last game, you know, we had 19, but uh, Alabama had 17. And, but we've, we've got to do a, a much better job of taking care of the ball. Jerry Tipton, Andre Monroe, and Trey Wallace. Yeah, Rick, I wonder uh, how the guys are spending their time uh, in the bubble, how much time in the room, and what coaching concern is there with an extended period in a bubble? Jerry, it's uh, tough, as you would imagine, you know, but we understand why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, I think, to be quite honest and frank, do you feel bored, uh, everybody? I, I do think that. I think every chance we get now to get out, whether it's to go back, you know, to a, a court and shoot at some point in time or get outside, and we will be allowed to get out today for the first time since we've been here, to go for a little walk. Uh, but uh, it's been tough. It has been. I mean, uh, and it's. You think about it. We still got another day to go. But the fact that we're out and moving. But uh, today will be the first time that we actually walk outside since we've been here. Thanks. Hey, coach. We're discussing Oregon State. You mentioned they fans as strong as any team in the country. Can you go more in depth about that matchup against Oregon State and what makes them a tough team to play? Say say that again, please. Yeah, yeah. So you did, so when discussing Oregon State, you mentioned they finished as strong as any team in the country. Can you go more in depth about that? What makes them a tough team to play? Well, I'm impressed with their balance. You know, I think that they've got some post players that I I really like the way they play. They're aggressive, and I like what they do. I think that they, it's a team that has truly uh, they understand where they are, their roles on on what needs to be done. I think the guys that they need to shoot, they they do a good job of getting them involved and. Uh, they do a nice job of, uh, I think, just everybody understanding exactly what their role is. And they do have an inside-outside game, and uh, they'll mix their defenses. You know, they're going to play two, three, uh, majority of the time, you know, underneath the basket on out-of-bounds plays. They'll do a two, three, and they'll match out of it, and uh, they'll play man-to-man. -man. And like I said earlier to start with, uh, it, it, and they'll do a little – they can do a little combination – press, uh, you know, tempo type press to, if they want to at three quarter court. So, you, you know, they have something there. If they get behind it, they can extend it. And they have one, three, one, uh, everything that, that we've seen all that this year. And, uh, but I, I don't think that we're going to show them anything they haven't seen. Uh, Cause once you go through a year of conference play, you get to see a lot of different things, but it's just the fact that I think this time of year, you, you look at uh, how well they're playing and what they had to do. And, and you really think about the mindset they had to have to get to to get into this tournament. They knew they had to go to Vegas and, and win, just plain and simple. And they did it. And uh, so uh, – and they it, they did it by 
what it looks like to me. Uh, may, they, they shot the ball well. They did that. They still got what they needed from their post players. And defensively, they, they made it tough on those three opponents. When you think about you know, UCLA and you think about Colorado and then beating your in-state rival all in three days, that's, that's, that's quite impressive. Rick, how has, since the Alabama game, we saw Euros get a lot of minutes in that game as well. Uh, how has the, the, the bench been over the last four to five days? I know y'all had a bunch of shoot arounds and whatnot in Nashville before you got to Indianapolis and then you had practice already. Uh, you're going to have to rely on your bench against Oregon State. How do you think they've responded, especially over the last two to three weeks? Well, again, I think the fact that, you know, we've got a good group. I've said that, uh, and I told you I'm, I was really proud of what those guys were ready. They were ready to go when we went to Nashville, and we know this time of year all hands have to be ready to go. And, and uh, you know, through uh, once we we went over uh, Sunday and they wanted, uh, you know, they wanted to get in the gym. That's, they wanted – normally we wouldn't have done that, but they wanted to do it. And, and the main thing, I think, was they want to get out – do some things. And so we, we let them lead us a little bit here. And because we do think the most important thing right now, this time of year is, is the mental side of it, where guys are chomping at the bit, ready to go. And, and I don't think there's any question that every team in, in here right now wishes we were playing tomorrow. I think every team because of being in the bubble and doing that. And, you know, we've all been, you know, doing what we've done all year, but uh, we still got what another day, two days before we actually tip it off. And, and uh, but our guys, uh, they they seem to be in a good place. Other than, I do know this: they're looking forward to getting outside. I do know that. Grant Ramey, Rick, you guys didn't have much tournament experience on this roster when you went to Nashville. Were you impressed with how your guys handled themselves there? And do you think the basketball that was played there had an NCAA tournament feel to it? No doubt the games that we played in there were high level, uh, felt NCAA type games. There's no question about that. I thought uh, both of our opponents and our guys fought their hearts out, understanding that how every possession, there's a premium put on each one of them and you've got to fight for each one, every one of them. Not going to play perfect, but you got to play hard. And, you know, Florida played hard. We played hard. Alabama played hard. And this time of year, you know, teams aren't going to still be playing if they don't play hard plain and simple and uh, Oregon State plays hard we, we they play hard or they wouldn't be where they are right now but I, I was impressed Grant in the fact that I thought our guys in the last week going back to the you know really week and a half probably before we got to Nashville the prep were just mentally were guys gotten really locked in asking questions during the scout all those type things and and um, so that part of it you know would we be further along if we had played a regular season like everybody, I think everybody would, you know, you go back and look at, you know, from the beginning the exhibition game, we didn't play the scrimmage. We didn't play. And then I think we're down six non-league games. And so, yeah, I'm just, I was impressed with the way our guys, their, their approach to the, the last really two weeks have been. Last question for coach goes to Trey Wallace. It, Rick, have you talked to other coaches inside the ball? I'm sure you have, but are you guys worried any type of way that these guys have just been, in their hotel room, but then hotel room to convention center, how they're going to react getting into a gym and, and, and getting going when their games start? Yeah, because you know what? To be quite honest, I mean, it's, it's, this is, it's a grind right now, what we're doing. I mean, we haven't done this all year. I don't think we've been locked in like we have from the time we got off the bus on Sunday at, at uh, around, what, 5, 6 o'clock, something like that. I mean, Monday, 5 or 6 o'clock, and now it's uh, Wednesday, and – we haven't. We can look out the windows, but we haven't been outside. So, yeah, yeah. Do I think it's hard on? I think it's hard on everybody. I think it's hard on uh, uh, every team that's here. I think it's. But I, I've said before. I think we got to give our, our players, players around the country, and administrators for getting us to this point. Knowing that when we got here, no, no one knew exactly what to expect. I think it's being done the very best way it can be done to try to make sure that things move the way they need to move, and. Um, with that said, is it difficult on everybody? I, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's different. You know, even all that we've gone through this year is, uh, and I think that the SEC and everything that we've done has been terrific. But it's not like this. I mean, we're in we're in a real bubble right now. We're like I said, we have our floor. We walk from here down to our 
our uh, eating room and back. And we didn't do that for the first, what, 36 hours. But now again, today will be the first time that we, we'll get to get outside and get a little fresh air. Thank you, coach. We'll have Josiah, Jordan, James in just a moment. All right, we're now joined by sophomore guard, Josiah, Jordan, James. We'll start with questions from Rick Russo, Scott Iceberg and Nicholas Hill. Hey, Josiah, good afternoon. You know, Coach Barnes was just on talking about how you guys have been in a, what he calls a real bubble for the last couple of days. Talk about what that's been like and, and about John Fulkerson, how much you guys are rooting for him to, to get back in action with you. Um, it's, uh, it's been pretty tough. Um, we've been shut down for a little bit uh, on lockdown, but um, being able to get back into the gym yesterday and practice uh, and practice today, being able to get outside, we're being able to do a lot more as time goes on. So uh, at first when we were locked down in our room for I think 20 something hours, uh, it was tough. Guys were just uh, chomping at the bit to just get outside the room. Um, but I, I, I respect the way that everybody here has handled it um, as far as the, the people who are in charge of it and then the, the players and coaches who are involved. Um, and as far as John goes, we're, we're in, in his corner. Uh, he's our guy, he's our leader. And so we're just, we have his back at all times. And uh, we're just happy he's with us on this trip. Hey, Jos Josiah, I hope you're doing well. Um, for you, you know, such a basketball junkie. You've always been so, you know, into basketball. And I'm sure, you know, grew up watching the tournament. Your dad played college ball. Does this feel like the tournament? Do you feel like you're in the big dance? Or does it feel totally like surreal, like you're in a different you know, just a different element. It just doesn't feel like the dance because you're in this bubble. It definitely uh, de definitely does feel like the big dance. Um, it really hit me when I got here in Indianapolis and I see all the the posters and everything and everybody's here for everybody that's in town right now is here for the NCAA tournament. So it definitely, um, even though the circumstances are a lot different, it definitely still feel, feels surreal like I'm in the big dance. And so I'm just grateful to, to have this opportunity. I definitely won't take it for granted. I know this team won't take it for granted. Josiah, you know, I know it's been, you've known who you're going to play since Sunday, but just take me through the moment that you found out you're going to play Oregon State and just what that initial uh, feeling of knowing it, that you see your name on the big screen during Selection Sunday. And just what are your initial thoughts about Oregon State in this game and some of the film that you've seen of them? Uh, we were all just grateful. Um, we were in Nashville. Um, we were in our team room and uh, we were watching Selection Sunday. We were just grateful to see uh, our name up there on the board um, as a five seed. Um, having all your hard work, um, even though we came up short uh, in the regular season, the SEC tournament, uh, it all comes down to this. And to have an opportunity to go get the, the big one, uh, that's all we asked for. And, and just to see our name, we're very grateful and honored uh, that they selected us. And what was the second question? I'm just wondering your initial thoughts about Oregon State based off the film you've seen of them. They're a really good team. They're um, as hot as any any team in the country right now. They were picked uh, to finish last and they finished first in their tournament. So they're a really hot team. Um, we, we started watching film on them. They're a really well-balanced team. Um, and like coach just said, they have uh, role players and the guys know their roles. And so we have to key in on them, know our scouting report. Um, but it's, it's definitely going to be a high level game. I'm looking forward to it. Stephen Winnow, Grant Ramey, and Rob Lewis. Here's I think. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, I got a wacky question for you. Everybody knows the, uh, the One Shining Moment song they play at the end of the tournament. When you're growing up, and, and you've, you've obviously watched the tournament and watched that video, did you ever pretend you were in that song, hitting a buzzer beating shot, try to get that video? Definitely. And sometimes I'd go out like after the tournament was over, I just listen to that while I'm working out, uh, just envisioning myself, imagining myself in that moment in that video. And just uh, as a kid and even year like last year, um, going back and just when I'm working out, I definitely um, tried to envision myself in this moment. And to be here right now is definitely really, really surreal. Oh. Keep you going down memory lane. Is there one game or one shot or one moment from the NCAA tournament from your childhood growing up that you that stands out the most? Um, the shot that Jordan Poole hit, I forget, they were playing Dayton, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and he hit a, a go ahead three pointer at the buzzer. And my dad uh, went to Michigan State, so he wasn't too happy about it. So that's why it just sticks with me. So just watching that game with him uh, was, was a lot of fun. Josiah, how much more comfortable are you playing the four when you guys go to that small ball lineup than you were, you know, back in December when it was really a new wrinkle? 
a lot more comfortable. And that just comes with experience. Um, and then just knowing what the coaches and my teammates need from me, I feel very comfortable at this at the four spot right now um, because I've just done it so much. Um, and I think that we're a, a really effective team uh, with that lineup and with all of our lineups, but um, a lot more comfortable than I was in December, to say the least. Andre Monroe, Mike Wilson, and Vince Ferrara. Yeah, going into the tournament, has your mental or physical preparation changed at all? Not really. Uh, I I feel like us as a, as a as a organization, as a staff, as players, we uh, go into every game uh, preparing at the best that we can, uh, whether it be practicing, working out, uh, watching film. And so I don't think it's really changed. Uh, we know there's a lot more at stake, but we've been doing this all year. So um, we know that habits went out. And so we just tried to have the same habits all year. And I don't think that we could do any anything else physically or um, mentally wise that we haven't been doing all year. Josiah, obviously, John's dealing with some uncertainty and it's just not knowing kind of what's going to happen on Friday. How have you guys tried to encourage him and, and be there for him, I guess, especially in that first 24 hours where you guys are isolated in your own rooms? I just know that like, like we we we're his brother and he's our brother and he's our leader like I said earlier and know that we have his back um and that we don't want him to do anything that he's not capable of and that is more it's a lot bigger than basketball his health is first and foremost and so we just want him to get healthy um back to being John we we kind of joke with him about the black eye a little bit it's a I think it's a good look for him but um um I, I joke with him about it but just keeping him in good spirits because whether he plays in the game, if he doesn't play, it, it, it really doesn't matter. His health is first and foremost. And just seeing him smile and uh, being the folky that we know is our biggest concern. Decide two things. One, I know you've played in some good arenas uh, in your time at Tennessee, but what do you think about playing in the home of the Pacers there at Banker's Life? And then also Vis uh, Santiago Vescovia talked about how the backdrop in Nashville kind of messed with them a little bit. There was some adjustment. Uh, how much adjustment do you think a, a bigger arena uh, and a different arena like that will make in terms of your shooting background? I'm really excited to play in the, the great arenas that we have here. Really excited. Um, I know that uh, there's a lot of history on every one of these courts. And so just to go out and try to make a history of our own is something that we try to uh, think about and try are going to try to do. And as far as the backdrop and everything goes, um, I really try don't try to think about it because I feel like if you if you think about it, then it will have an effect. But I don't I, don't, I didn't really feel that way in Nashville. Um, the rim's still 10 feet, but the backdrop um, definitely does have an effect on your perception and everything. But I just try not to think about it. Cal Baxter and Jerry Tipton. Josiah, um, you are going to host yoga today at five at five or six o'clock Eastern. What, what what's that experience going to be like, and how much of it a change will it be to kind of maybe interact with some fans and 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 people that uh, do something different in this in this bubble? I'm really looking forward to it. Um, when I woke up this morning, I wasn't thinking about practice, wasn't thinking about breakfast or anything. I was thinking about the yoga session. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, I have a couple of my teammates down, whoever wants to join me. Um, and then as, far as with the Facebook Live, I definitely look to interact with a lot of people since, um, you know, I, I really just tried to, I, I was gonna do it regardless on my own, but um, for me to be able to do it for other people and hope that it has a good effect on their day, whether whatever they're going through, my teammates, I know they're bored, um, but people at home just hoping that I can bring a little bit of, of laughter um, and feel good energy to them. That's that's really all I want to do with that. Yeah, and uh, this is Jerry Tipton in Lexington. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, as I, I'm wondering about what, how the players are filling their time in their rooms. Uh, and I'm, I think the NCAA has given you guys, all players, uh, like a book and a puzzle. Do you guys use any of that? Or how, how do you spend your time? Uh, for me personally, um, the first 20 hours when we were in quarantine, I was just watching Netflix, trying to stay off of my feet. Um, I did a little bit of yoga. I have my PlayStation 5 with me and a couple of my teammates do. And so we would play the game for a little bit with each other. Um, and so that's something that we do, um, play the game. Uh, Olivier has um, some type of game, Smash Bros. And everybody's in, on the way down uh, down the hall. I heard them in there. So they're um, 
in there right now. A lot of people have homework, so we're still in school, so we got to take care of that. So academics come first. Um, but as far as us as a team, we're just really trying to hang out um, and play video games uh, and just make sure each other is as happy as possible. Thanks. Mike Wilson, Trey Wallace, and Wes Rucker. Just Ty, what were the, the biggest positives you feel like you guys took out of Nashville and the way you played against Florida and Alabama? Just the effort and the fight that we played with. Um, we know that um, in the first game, we knew it was going to be a hard, in both games, we knew it was going to be a tough, gritty game. And I feel like we didn't back back down from the challenge. It was a game runs in both games. And I feel like we, we stepped up to the plate and played hard and played physical. And that wasn't the reason that we lost. We had some mental errors that we have, definitely have to take care of if we want to go far in this tournament. And we will take care of. But I was just happy at the way we competed. Um, they were both really two high energy level games. And I don't think the stage was too bright for anybody. And I think that we we prepared and played as, as, to best, as best as we could. Um, and being without Folky, we know that it was tough, but I think that um, we did uh, we did as best as we could in both games. Josiah, how do you feel? Two questions: How do you feel like you you recovered from your sprained wrist that you talked about at LSU? Uh, how's that How's that coming along? Do you have any problems with that still? And also, second part of the question: uh, What is it going to be like when you get to walk outside today, get some fresh air for the first time in a minute? Um, as far as the sprain wrist goes, I just, um, I just took some time off and like every other sprain, the doctor tried to explain it to me, you just, you can't keep overworking it, overworking it. It needs some time to heal and rest and get better. And it's at a hundred percent right now. So that won't be a, a factor for me. Um, and I'm really looking forward to going to get some fresh air. You, you can look outside. It, it looks beautiful outside. And I mean, this will be the first time we've we've been outside in, in a while. I know everybody's look, really looking forward to it uh, just to get some fresh air and just to breathe a little. Yeah, Josiah, when you were uh, on Netflix there, what, if, you, if you don't mind telling us, what were you watching? Were you uh, be more of a movie guy or were you kind of streaming some shows? I was I finished up Queen of the South. And then I tried to get into last. I usually love Last Chance U, the football. I, I usually can watch it in like a day and a half. But I just, I haven't gotten into the basketball season. I've, I watched an episode. I think that since my life is filled up with so much basketball, I don't, I'm, I'm not really in the mood to watch even more basketball. But uh, I finished Queen of the South. And then I actually started Naruto because a couple of my teammates are big anime guys. And I joke about them. I, I make fun of them a lot. And I, I decided since I have so much time, I'd give it a try. So I'm on episode three of Naruto. All right. Thank you, Josiah. Thanks, everyone.